What's up guys, thank you for stopping by Western Ops. I'm making this video all about the primary arms 5x prism scope. And I'm going to break this video up into three different sections. I'm going to talk about the scope itself, talk a little bit about the reticle and how to use it. And then at the end, I'll give you my final thoughts and opinions on how the scope is working after my first 500 rounds through it. What application do I see this scope for? And who can benefit the most from this type of scope? And um, there's a couple things that scope's not perfectly made for or cut out for, but it still kind of works. So stay tuned uh, if you're looking to get this type of scope or any kind of similar scope. Um, I haven't used too many of the other five time prism scopes, but I can definitely vouch for this one. So stay tuned if you're looking for this type of scope or if you weren't really thinking about it, but it is something you want to get into. Uh, hopefully this video will help you out and uh, kind of narrow out your decision on which one to go to, whether it be this or a different type of uh, LPVOs. So let's jump right into it and we'll start off with the uh, specs and detail on the scope itself. Starting from the back of the scope and working our way forward, it does come with the flip up caps. It does have front and back. You can take them off if you don't really want them. Um, one thing you will have to do is take the rear cap off to get to the diopter. And the diopter is just a quick focus point. It helps you get a better focus on the reticle itself. It does not help for your sight picture. It's just to focus in on the reticle to make sure the reticle is looking as crisp as possible to your eye. And this is all adjustable per person. Um, so everybody might have a different um, a different setting that works best for their eyes. Everybody's eyes are different, but so you just kind of twist it to the side Going forward from there you do have your illumination one good thing about the scope that kind of sets it apart from some of the others This one does have a green and red illumination and That is something that's really cool. It's something new uh, for me I've never used a green illumination all my other scopes are red so actually to get this and be able to try out the green without making an expensive purchase and being stuck with it, I do have the ability to go back to red if the red works better for my eyes. Uh, but it gives you that option of trying out the green. A lot of people talk good about the green and say it's a little easier on your eye. Um, so it's all about habit. So I've always used red because that's what all the rest of my scopes are. And that's what my eye has gotten used to and trained to, tr to attract. With this scope, it is etched. So you do not have to use illumination. It will show up as a black reticle you do have the ability to turn the green and red on uh, to use it when you need to use it or if you prefer to use it. Uh, going forward from that, you do have your vertical elevation adjustment. And the caps are tethered on, which makes a really cool thing. Uh, you don't have to worry about losing them. Um, I have lost some caps in the back in the past, just being out shooting, taking them off, putting them down at the table or on your shooting mat. And next thing you know, you get up. You know, big bug, snake coming at you, you get up and run. Next thing you know, your caps are gone. But, uh, so this is, it's a tooled adjustment, but it's a very easy tool. So you can use a flathead screwdriver or you can use a bullet case to adjust your elevation. And the same with the windage. The windage is on the side, right to the right side of your elevation. The normal spot that they normally always are. And once again, it is, uh, capped and tethered on as well. Um, I forgot to mention the battery goes right inside the illumination knob so you can actually just take that off you can use a quarter or any kind of big coin or a big flathead um, you can't really use a bullet case for that it's not really worked out for that I did scratch it up a little bit but it's still going strong um, so you just use a coin or any kind of big flat head screwdriver to get it off it does take a CR 2032 uh, battery, which are, is very common for these day and age, you can pick them up pretty much anywhere. Um, going forward from that, you do have a little picatinny rail. So if you do want to throw like a some kind of reflex sight right on the top of it uh, for your extremely close shots, um, I will go into it a little bit further on my opinion on do you need to have that. But it's there if you want. It is held on by four uh, four torque screws. So all you have to do is take those torque screws off and you can remove that if it, if you don't like it. I just left it. It's not really in the way or anything like that. Um, and then at the front of it, you do have 
your uh, forward cap or your front cap uh, for your your glass cover. Uh, so the scope body is made out of 6061 aluminum, and this one is anodized in matte black, but you can get them in FDE as well. Um, this thing does have a lifetime warranty on it, which is a great thing. The weight with the battery is claimed to be 18.4 ounces and the scope is nitrogen purged. So the objective lens is 36 millimeters. The eye relief is two and a half to three inches. So your field of view at 100 yards is 18.8 .8 feet. And the click value for when you're trying to adjust your turrets is uh, 0.33. So every three clicks is one MOA at 100 yards. And uh, you have a total of 35 MOA adjustment. It is fog resistant, fully multi-coated lenses. The length without the lens covers is 5.81 inches. So it's fairly pretty compact. It's not a big, huge scope that's gonna be one thing that is important to do with these scopes when you first get them is down here on the bottom you see the two you have the two screws right there with the it comes with a little hex key as well well these things are not lock tighted down when they come in simply because there is a riser in the middle so depending on what type of rifle you're putting this on uh you may or may not want that riser um you don't have to use a riser if if it's more comfortable for you to have it out it will go directly on or if you're trying to mount this on top of a carry handles that you put on top of the ARs, you can mount this straight to the carry handle as well, I believe. But if you are going to use it in this configuration, the way that it comes out of the box, uh, all you do is loosen those screws, throw on some blue Loctite. Um, if it's something that's going to be permanent and you know you're never going to want to change it, throw red. I never throw red. I always throw blue. Because uh, you never know what's going to happen. I change on my optics on my rifles quite often. So... I never know where this is going to end up next, so I put blue Loctite on it so I can break it loose if I need to. If you have any other questions about the basics of the scope itself, if you have any questions about it, anything that I wasn't too clear about, please leave a message below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. So now I want to get into the reticle just a little bit. Um, if you're already familiar with the ACSS, this is not going to be anything real new for you. Um, this is more for the people that have no idea how the ACSS works and what the benefits of using this reticle system is. Uh, it's really thought out well. It really has a purpose, everything in the reticle. There's nothing in the reticle that is a waste of space or just there for no reason. Everything has a purpose. And if you know how to read the reticle the right way, it will help you out in a lot of situations. Uh, me personally, I shoot out in the desert and I shoot a lot of unknown distance. Uh, my laser rangefinder doesn't work all that great. So most of the time I can use it to gauge out to a couple hundred yards. I'll usually use it to separate my targets at least 100 yards apart from each other. And then I use it to get 100 yards zero. Outside of that, I can't measure anything beyond three, 400 yards. So when I'm shooting at long distance or mid range targets, you know, anywhere from four to a thousand yards, I have to use my reticle because nothing else will work to get a proper ranging. So it's pretty much all unknown distance for me. So that's one feature that I really like about these scopes is they really do help you offer ranging within the capabilities of the actual scope. So let's talk about the reticle a little bit. This was a little different than some of the other ACSS reticles. It, it doesn't have that sharp horseshoe edges like we're used to. It also does not have a chevron. That's one thing that would be nice to have in the scope. Maybe that's something they might change in the next generation or two. We'll see what happens. Um, but you still use it the same way as you would use the other ones. You do have the dot for your 100 yard. Okay, so when you're going through your book, depending on what rifle you're using and what ammo you're using, there's going to be a little different way of how you get your zero. But I'm just going to go over the basic side of it. Um, if you are using it, once you get it, uh, definitely look at the manual to see where you zero at because it could be anywhere plus or minus an inch at 100 yards. So I'm just going to do the generic breakdown of it just so you kind of have an idea and then just know with your rifle it's going to be plus or negative an inch the basic loadout for this is uh you zero at 100 yards right in the middle of the, the little dot in the middle um your 200 yard hold is going to be right at the bottom part of the circle so the little dot in the middle right below that is your 200 yard hold 
And then um, the top of the post will be your 300 yard hold. Uh, the first line is going to be your 400 and then it goes all the way down. So you got your four, five, six, seven, and eight. Every other one being uh, have a little number, that little four, the six, and the eight, that's actually your 100 yard hold. So that's your 400, 600, and 800 yard hold. In between there, obviously, it's just in between there, your, your five and your seven. And then you see the little dots off to the side. Well, that's a great thing to have. Those are actually your wind holds. So at those distances, if you have a wind, that's where you hold at, give or take left or right side, depending on which way the wind is coming in and which way it's going. But you hold there at a five mile an hour wind. If it's a little bit stronger, you kind of just, you, you can have it float out a little bit. So if you know that, you know, if you hold your five mile an hour wind, hold dead center on the target, and you know that there's wind. And you can see that you missed by, you know, just to the right side of your target. And you can tell that it just barely missed it. Well, now you can hold that 500 yard target to the opposite edge of your target and then take the shot. And then it gives you good reference so you know. So you're not totally floating out in the middle of nowhere with your, uh, your reticle. You can use that for a reference or if it's five mile an hour, you hold that. And then if, you're, if there's a 10 mile an hour hold, you can kind of double that distance. So it gives you good reference for it. And then up to the top on the left and the right side are actually, you see the two thicker circles out there. That's gonna be your uh, your lead. So if you have a moving target, the average target based on the military standard is 8.6 miles an hour. So if that's where your target is and it's moving at that distance, you hold there, you can hold on that dot, pull the trigger and it's gonna hit your target. And then once again, it just gives you a reference. So if you shoot and you miss, you know, depending on where it is, it, at least it's a good reference point. So you're not totally floating out in the middle of nowhere. So from the two dots in, you know, including your chevron and the, the zero holds, that's going to be your CQB holds. Like that, that whole area of the reticle is just for CQB. The lower part from 400 down, you know, your medium range area. So you just kind of break it down into two areas. And then off to the right side, that's your auto ranging. So that's all included as well. This reticle will, will auto range two different types of ways in three different ways of doing it if that makes sense. Just follow me for a second. So you have your auto range to the far right side. So if you put the bottom of the feet at your bottom line, and then wherever the top of the head is, that gives you a range in yards on that scale. Now this is based on five foot 10 inches, which is the average height. If a person is a little bit taller, a little bit shorter, it's gonna get you close enough to make a hit. Um, if they're extremely tall, you know, you might be a little bit low, but once again, it's just a reference. It's not an exact, but it, it does get you very close. And another way of using it is if you can't see the whole body, but you do see the shoulders, you can measure shoulder to shoulder. And all you do is you put the shoulders, uh, put your lines directly on the shoulders and the lines get smaller as the numbers get bigger. And that's because that's another auto ranging. So if you range both the the person shoulder to shoulder on an average of 18 inches, which is another military standard. It will actually get you close enough to take a hit. And then if you are measuring the shoulder to shoulder, instead of using that side bracket, it's a little easier to actually use your reticle. So that's what I normally do is I use a reticle. Every once in a while I will use a side, but my targets aren't five foot 10 inches, but my furthest target I set up is always 18 inches. So I use that. So if it goes to the outer edges of your donut, you're looking at one to 200 yards. And then if it, if it's bigger than that, then you're well within that 200 yards. So you can literally just hold right on, use your donut, put it right center mass, take the shot. If the shoulders measure out to the edge of the donut, then you know you're at 200 yards or in. And then if it measure, measures to the bottom part, the opening, corner to corner or edge to edge, then you're looking at 300 yards. And then once you get beyond that, all the lines, all your vertical lines where your holes are, you can see that those lines get a little smaller as well. Well, that's actually your measuring tool as well. So it's a little easier and faster because once you find the one that fits, you're already, you're already pointed at your target where you need to hold at. So instead of using the right one where you find out how far it is and then you have to transfer over to your BDC, you, once you find the measurement, 
using your BDC, you're already aiming at the target. So at that point, just pull the trigger. As long as you match it up well, you pull the trigger, you're gonna get your hit. And I have used these ACSS reticles out to pretty good distance. So they do work, the math is right. And this all comes down to math when you're doing these BDCs. And I think that's the biggest issue is some companies didn't do the math right and they got a really bad name to it. But once you once they figured out the math, uh, everything falls into place. So to break down my opinion on the scope and what I see this for, this is not a precision scope as far as long range precision. This is definitely a fighting scope. And being a uh, prism scope, it does have some things for it. So I'm gonna try and break this down a little bit so it all makes sense. So you can shoot long range with it. Um, for a 5.56, 5 800 yards is a good amount of distance to get that uh, you know, 55 grain cartridge or 62 or 75. What, whatever you're gonna shoot, it does, it kind of pushes the cartridge limit a little bit at 800 yards. So it's not really made for precision shots. You're not gonna shoot small objects at a really far distance. With the way the turret system is, it's not made to dial in a, a precise measurement. It's made to set it and forget it. So you wanna get it zeroed and you wanna forget about it. Maybe when the, weather's, when the weather changes or you're changing ammunition, you're gonna to wanna to reconfirm your zero to, um, if you're using the same type of ammo over and over and over. If you're gonna get a different type of ammo, that's when you wanna re-zero it to make sure that it's lined up with that ammo. This is, to me, this is definitely like a fighting scope. For one, it's tough as nails. Realistically, most of us live in the city. The zombie apocalypse came or, you know, something crazy happened and I was gonna throw this on my rifle for a fighting scope. I wouldn't be expecting to take targets out at 800 yards with my AR-15. If I'm shooting 800 yards at a target with my AR-15, most likely it's gonna be get the bullet close enough maybe hit one person and make them get down and hide, take cover, not knowing where the bullet's coming from. And that way it gives me a better opportunity to get away or to get better coverage or a better vantage point or something to that extent. I'm not gonna be sitting there trying to pluck people off at 800 yards with a 5.56. Five, so that's kind of where I see that, that long range, 800 yards, 700 yard shots come in, is more of to be able to give yourself time to get out of the situation if you know, the SHT hit the fan. Um, when you're shooting close up with this, you can use both eyes open when you're shooting at close distances. Just using the horseshoe for your aiming point, I was shooting everything under 100 yards with both eyes open, and it's easy to get used to this type of thing. So, the couple of advantages of it has is it's tough. It's not, it's a fixed scope. So you don't have to worry about all the moving parts on the inside breaking. It's an etched reticle, so you don't have to worry about your battery dying. I mean, the worst thing to do is have like a normal red dot and something happened and your batteries are dead and you don't have any extra batteries. Then the optic's useless. So at least with this one with the etched reticle, it's always going to work. So that would be another advantage for having this type of scope. The fact that it does have the BDC out to distance, it does have your horseshoe for your close in. Uh, your CQB. All in all, I'm I'm really happy with this scope. Um, it's a really good fighting scope. Limitations, it's not a precision scope. It's not made for that. But what it is made for is a battle rifle. So if that's what you're looking for, something tough, something that's durable, something that can hang, um, something very easy to get strapped on and get hooked up, uh, definitely look towards this scope. This is a scope I definitely would have around set up on a rifle that if SHD hit the fan, you grab and go. Cause you question if it's going to work or if the batteries are good. You just grab it and go. So if you like this type of video, guys, if you want to see more, uh, hit that like, hit that subscribe. I do have a, um, I'm thinking about putting a two and a half on a 10 and a half inch pistol to see how that works. So if that's something you want to see, uh, stay tuned. I have more videos coming soon. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.